2023. Okay, let me set this over. Good evening. Welcome to the Village of Marinette, uh, June 12, 2023, regular uh, board meeting. Uh, please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. No, I always do Pledge of Allegiance. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Aye. Pledge of Allegiance to the United States of America. To the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <clears throat> now, I need a motion to open the meeting. So moved. Second. Oh. Uh, before I open open the meeting, we were in executive session, uh, and uh, we finished. And I want to close executive session. I make a motion to close executive session. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, now the motion to open the meeting. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, announce the action that was taken in the executive session. Oh, okay. Uh, in, in executive session, uh, the Village of Mamari Board of Trustees voted unanimously uh, to take an appeal from the recent litigation uh, that Hampshire uh, has uh, brought against the village. Hampshire LLC versus the Village of America. Thank you. Uh, okay, there are fire exits on my right and on my left. If you have a cell phone, uh, please put it on mute. Thank you. Uh, the first item on the agenda is police officers awards presentation. And tonight we are uh, blessed to have our police chief here. Uh, chief, it's up to you. Good evening. So on May 2nd, myself, Officer Anthony Friday, and Sergeant Andrew Banquet attended an award ceremony in Albany, New York for the New York State Stop PWI and Mothers Against Drunk Driving Award Ceremony. During that uh, ceremony, the department received one award and each of the officers attendants received an award. Um, unfortunately, Anthony Friday could not be here. Uh, but he did receive a Recognition of Excellence Award. There were only 29 awards given out in that category, and that's for every city, village, and town in New York State. So Anthony Frioli um, accounted for 14% of the DWI and DWAI arrests uh, throughout last year from this department. He is also one of our newest field training officers for the department. Sergeant Banquet was also in attendance and he received the Recognition of Excellence DRE Enforcement. So that's Drug Recognition Expert Enforcement. There were only 14 awards given out for all of New York State. And Sergeant Banquet was one of the recipients of those awards. Um, Sergeant mm -hmm. Banquet was a top individual DWI, DWAI enforcer for our village with 28% um, of all DWI, DWI and DWAI arrest. Um, he continues to be proactive in enforcement even after becoming a supervisor. And the Village of Marinick itself received an award. I'm sorry, uh, Sergeant Banquet, this is the fourth time that he received? Fifth time that he's received. And for the department, this is the fourth year that we've received an award of recognition for uh, Department of the Year. There were only 13 departments that were recognized throughout New York State. Uh, our department itself had 35 DWI, DWAI arrests during the calendar year. And that was up almost 10% from the previous year. So um, we are doing our due diligence and putting out there and trying to protect the community and keeping our motors and our pedestrians safe. So that um, those were the awards that were presented that evening. Um, Unfortunately, no police work duty calls. So Officer Kalasako and his new canine partner, Ike, unless they come in, um, are on a call right now, so they are not able to attend. Um, but as you know, um, about two months ago, we received a donation from Southeastern Guide Dogs, which was a donation of canine Ike. She is a Labrador Golden Retriever mix. Um, they graduated from school. May 26th, and since that time, they've already made uh, two, so two uh, drug arrests uh, since that time. They're gonna so, arrest too, right? 
Yes, yes, we saw one of the rest also led to a, a gun arrest. Um, so they're out on the road, you'll be seeing them around. And in August, they're attending another two weeks of training, um, having to do the tour of research and things of that nature. So maybe a better meeting to think of a formal introduction. Oh, okay. yeah, I'd be happy to have them. Terrific. Like to meet Ike. <laughs> yeah. That's, well, thank you very much. Well, congratulations, you. Officer Baker. Uh, Sergeant Baker. To the whole department, thank you very much for an outstanding job, Chief. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Now we have a presentation by the ever popular. What? Yeah. Oh, wait. Oh, look. Speak it. Speak it, the devil. Hi. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I like the dog too. <laughs> yes, this is uh, Ike. This is my partner. We just got done with six weeks of narcotic school. Um, Still sniffing. She's sniffing. Uh, we uh, obviously, I'm sure you guys saw she pulled a gun. We to the other week, last week, we got a gun together. And just about an hour ago, hit on some crack cocaine for one of my partners. So, uh, so it's been a good couple of weeks for her. So let's keep it busy. And this we go back to school for uh, another portion. That's great. Thank you. Thank you, officer. Thank you. Keep it, take care, right? This might could be opening up the office. Is it? Oh, no, jeez. I guess probably wasn't so much Yeah, it's true, right? Oh, right, well, that, that was uh, an interesting prelude. Uh, the next up is our, our friends at the Harbor Island Conservancy have a project they want to present to us. Who's doing a presentation? June? Hello, June. Anybody else want to accompany her? Or... Steve, we're up there by yourself. Thank you. Hi. June Ottinger and join me as one of our board members at SPLARD. Thank, um, thank you very much for allowing us to um, make a presentation to the board. We're asking for approval tonight for a project that Harbor Island Conservancy would like to give to the village. Um, mm. Some of you may not be familiar with Harbor Island Conservancy. We were incorporated as a nonprofit 501c3 in 2003. So we've been hanging around for a while. And we worked closely with, organization, with Kathy Desmond, who was trying to make sure that the uh, beach was swimmable again back in 2003, working with the sewage problems in the village. Our mission is, <laughs> I'm just going to read it because I'm not very good at talking about this. Harbor Island Conservancy's goal is to maintain Harbor Island Park as an enjoyable destination for walking, playing, swimming, and fishing. We work in coordination with the village uh, government and other organizations to care for the park, providing knowledge, ideas, energy, and funding for beautification. The project tonight, I submitted some uh, information to you guys. I hope you got it. Um, it is a ADA compliant sitting garden area at the corner of Orienta and uh, Boston Post Road entrance um, along that big rock wall. And uh, Harbor Island Conservancy will be responsible for the cost just as we did with many of the other projects. We did the signage mm -hmm. on that wall. We've done the gazebo we donated to the village. We did the large playground near the um, tennis courts and, and the ball fields. Oh, goodness, I can't. Um, several of our board are here. Y'all can think of other projects. The entrance. Oh, the gardens at the entrance, what we used to call the black pole area that's been yeah. under construction. But we did that that garden, which actually ended up on the front of a, a calendar several years ago. Uh, we also did the uh, plantings as you enter the park. One of the ideas was if we get the park swimmable again and people start coming down to swim, it has to look good or they don't want to be there. And so we... Uh, Kind of once the, the sewage treatment was 
corrected and, and the water cleared up and people started coming for swimming, we decided, you know, let's make this park beautiful. But one of the things that we feel the park is could use is an area that's more ADA compliant. And the area that we're talking about in the park that we'd like to place this sitting garden area is very accessible to people of all needs and ages because there are several curb cuts and sidewalks leading into that area of, from both um, Oriental Avenue as well as Boston Post Road. And so we feel that it would be very accessible for people even in wheelchairs to be able to sit and it's actually one of the best views looking out across the harbor out to Long Island Sound. And well, board, can you think of anything else I need to say? <laughs> Tonight we're asking your permission to, or your approval to do this part for the village. On our agenda tonight at this meeting, is a resolution to put it on our work session. And it'll be on our work session in two weeks so we could have a deeper discussion and review of it. But I was hoping that we could do that tonight because we would really like to get this going. If we could get started, I have been speaking with uh, engineers and architects and they could get this park possibly finished by the end of July. I, I, I think, you know, it, it, it's a big move and, it, and I think it's a good move, but I think we, we, we do have to do our due diligence. But I understand you're, you're wanting to get it done and we want to get it done too, but we want to do it so that, you know, the public has input and people know what's going on. And uh, we, 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 we check with, you know, uh, all the interested parties and make sure it's going to work. And, but I, I think you're on the right path. We also have been speaking with... Um, the parks manager, Jeff, uh -huh. who is very much in favor of this. He feels that it's an underused section of the park that would be greatly enhanced. That was what he told me to tell you tonight. <laughs> and also Jason uh, said that he too felt that it would be a nice um, area for all ages to use this. Um, we also talked to uh, At Home on the Sound, who also thought it would be a great idea to provide better usage for people of all ages. And the Arts Council has also been looking at this area with us because they thought that it might be a good place to put a memorial to the first responders, but that's still something that they're batting around on a nice piece of art even would be great. So I think we're getting a lot of in positive input from village organizations. Uh, uh, yes, and I, and I think, uh, you know, we, we could put it on the work session and hopefully in two weeks, move it that night to the yeah. regular meeting. So we could have a decision in two weeks. Yeah, we, we, we would need that one session at least to go over the details of it. But if, uh, if it all looks good, we, we can, we can, um, we can move, move, it, to move it that night to the regular meeting. Yeah, how about half a um, one of the things, that, like I say, is we've been exploring um, more of the park detail. What I've submitted to you is just a very preliminary drawing. And so I am working, at, they're not going to, obviously we don't want to pay for an engineering uh, scaled drawing until we get approval from the village. But um, we have gotten a lot of suggestions, and so I'll try to provide you with a little more detail about what's actually going to be there because the drawing that I submitted did have some information that I thought, like it said, it was a wooden bench. No, we would use a green metal bench that would, okay. would reflect what is what's already in the park. In the park. Mm -hmm. um, so there's just a few little, and then we want to actually extend the width of some of the entry. So it's a little, we don't want 90 degree turns for a wheelchair wheel going chairs. into a park. So there's, in fact, the engineer told me it's called a flare <laughs> when you uh, make that curve to the sidewalk. So there are a few little changes that we've done already um, from suggestions we received that I think would enhance the drawing that I submitted earlier. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you to Bob and Service Chief. Thank you for all your dedication, hard work over the years, 
uh, your, your support and your uh, encouragement of the park. It's, it's, it's made a big difference. Thank you. Uh, the next up is uh, public comment period. Uh, the limit on yeah, the limit on public comment is three minutes. It's for everybody. So please bear that in mind. Did you do to myself going to that three minutes? No. Thank you. Luis Quiroz, I've been in the area. Married 45 years, three kids, two out of three, proud of their education. Got PhD, so you wouldn't have to master and it teaches. Address? Um, so I know what it takes to get the community educated. What saved my life was becoming a uh, philosopher and a student of community organizing. I got two graduate degrees and a lot of doctoral courses and ways to organize. And I believe that it saved my life. I'm an individual who grew up in Harlem, lived there over 25 years. And uh, regardless of how I may look, uh, born 1945, and with my mother, I couldn't enter Woolworths because you were dark and my grandpa was black. I saw the buildings in Harlem burn. I was there with, with the Black Panthers, Young Lords. I've got a history in spite of how I look. You just can't believe my age. I'm here because I've learned a lot of things in organizing for the top scholars in the world. And among them, Make it short. Those that make those that write the definition control the results. And if you don't have access to a service, that service does not exist. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to the village, the, the definition by the board and the subcommittees have never really the important decisions never even reach the entire public. And uh, this session started with awards. Over eight months ago, and most people know that I had a lawsuit against the village police department. And that village, that lawsuit ended, no winners in a way, but that to be, that has to be thought about different, uh, differently. But I was supposed to re receive an award over eight months ago for my service in the, as a crossing guard, and a park ranger because as a social worker, I also work in the community. That has not happened yet. So that contract has not been consummated and it hasn't been finalized. I have a nice house, I pay a lot of taxes. And when you don't have information, it's hard to organize. So that's why we have people like me that get the information out. The website, does still not, does still does not have the lawsuits documented uh, that have the current, especially related to the Hampshire Club. Now, if access to what the what's really behind the app, the Hampshire Club got out, we would know that the revenue that we can get from the taxes and the fifty-five million dollars that have gone into lawsuits and beyond that. Uh, is causing us and causing me to get increases in taxes. Our please, taxes please, are, stop, please finish up. Our taxes. That's me. Oh. Jerry? That's me. Yeah. Okay. Stop, please. Please stop. stop. Yeah. Our taxes are already high. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Quiro, please finish up. You're, yeah, you're done. This is, this is a, our taxes are an invisible fence as to why I couldn't get into Woolworths. It's creating a divide in classes. We need those tax monies and we got to stop paying for lawsuits that shouldn't be if we had access to the information Thank you. that should be had. Thank you very much. Thank you for your comments. Not just a comment. I'm uh, thank you. Th th sir, thank you. Please allow the I next know question. Please, well. please. Okay, please allow the next person to take yeah, the mic. Luis, come on. Hey, right, right, back to mine. I'm a person. 
All right. Okay. Thank you very much. I'm not, I'm not in Hi. I Please don't yell out from the audience. Hi, I'm Hilary Short. Um, I live at 151 Trenamore. Um, two and a half weeks ago at 9.15 in the morning, Sasha and Silas were crossing Boston Post Road at Fenimore. As they had the right to cross, a car did a left turn from Fenimore and hit them both. Silas had surgery on his foot and is still unable to walk. Speaking to many neighbours and local residents is possible in one at Delancey are both major problems to pedestrians. I'm happy to see you have a resolution on tonight's meeting about the lights, and I know it is on the traffic committee's agenda for tomorrow evening. I want to say a huge thank you to the police, the village police, firemen and ambulance workers um, and local residents for their prompt response. And also to the police for their bug terrarium that they brought, brought over to Silas's house with a lovely signed card by many of our police. He is so pleased with this and all the stuffies he received from the emergency workers that day. Thank you to Mayor Murphy for sending Sasha flowers and to Leilani for visiting with the family. These small things matter in our community. I also thank both our state senator and State Assemblyman for a quick response to my email and their concern about being proactive about this issue. I look forward to reporting back to Sasha and her family the measures that are going to be taken to keep residents safe in this happening again. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. And that is on the agenda for tonight. <clears throat> Good evening, trustees. Good evening. Um, thanks very much for the brief opportunity to comment on the village's updated comprehensive. Mm -hmm. My name is Jennifer Jacobs. Is that like is this the right time? Yes, yes, okay. it is. Yeah. You can comment longer during the comp plan portion. You're not limited to three minutes, just a tip. Uh, did you comment on the comp plan? Yeah. Yeah, wait, wait to the comp plan here. You get, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Jen. Robert Stark, 704 Palmer Court. I'm on the Traffic Commission. I'm not here to speak for the Traffic Commission, but I have a question about the traffic issues. On your work agenda, there were five issues for recommendation to the Traffic Commission. I was here earlier, I had to leave, I went home, watched TV, I didn't. So can somebody tell me were these issues addressed? There were? They're gonna be on the meeting in two weeks. We move them to the work to the regular meeting in two weeks. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we're going to go out of order uh, this one time uh, because the village manager's report is usually at the end. And the village manager tonight is going to give us a little update on flooding. And I would rather he do it when there's folks in the room to hear about it because usually not because he's not a good speaker or he's not interesting, but usually the room is empty by the time the village manager gives his report. So Jerry, can you give us a, your report tonight early? Sure. Um, so this is, um, this, is our, this is my parallel flood mitigation. The last one I did was uh, uh, early May. Uh, on May 12th, um, our consultant uh, for the permitting for the dredging sent preliminary plans to the Thruway Authority for their environmentalists to review. The permit application was also sent to JT Cleary, our dredging contractor, to sign and attach their insurance information. Once the Thruway Authority gives feedback to our consultant, they can address any comments to prepare for the full application to obtain their permission to dredge in their right of way. I do want to tell you that ongoing meetings have occurred on a weekly basis between our village engineer, our um, consultant, JT Cleary, and our, uh, I'm sorry, our contractor, JT Cleary, and our consultant, GEI to coordinate mobilization strategies for the summer dredging. That's what they're talking about now, moving equipment into the village. On May 7th, the final permit applications to the DEC, the DOS, and the Army Corps for the river maintenance projects were submitted, which include Westchester County approvals for the lot on Grove Street 
and receipt of the signed consultant um, forms will be submitted uh, with the applications to the agencies. So the full um, application has been submitted. It's extensive, it's hundreds of pages, and it costs thousands and thousands of dollars. But uh, what we've been promised by the Army Corps and the DEC, not necessarily the DOS, is that they will have a 10 day to two week turnaround time. So we're already in week one. So hopefully by the end of this month, we'll be dredging. Yep. And the contractor is talking about mobilization because we're bringing in the equipment. We're not waiting after they get the approval. We're bringing in the equipment now. Okay. Good news. Village sir. staff dressing efforts. Uh, since uh, April 3rd, the DPW has been dredging and clearing in the following areas. Um, the team has been back working since early April. We've had several trees over the winter um, come down or uh, come down in our rivers and lodge themselves as obstructions. Uh, we've also had some buildup at the choke points uh, due to the heavy rainfall that we received in April and May. Some of the areas um, that we've worked on is the Warren Avenue Park at the uh, I-95 overpass, the dead end of Bradley, and the Barry um, Avenue extension uh, near EMS. That's on the Maranek Riverside. On the Sheldrake Riverside, we've been dredging and clearing along Your time's up, Tom. <laughs> That's it. Uh, <laughs> it was over. No, long, finish up. Oh, it's long. Go ahead. Go okay. Along DPW's, um, on the Sheldrick Riverside, along DPW's salt shed, uh, we've been uh, clearing and dredging Fenimore Road Bridge and the River Bend at Plaza near Bud Walker Park. Um, so we're currently focused on going back into some of the um, bridge abutments that we've been clearing out uh, early last year. I'm sorry, earlier this year, um, and we're working on trying to keep, keep them clear. From June 25th to August 31st of this year, we'll be working on the Ralph Avenue and Gertrude Avenue drainage improvements. The existing stormwater infrastructure collects water from the culvert that runs along I-95, which is a tributary of the Mamaronic River. Uh, two 30-inch co uh, corrugated metal pipes began um, approximately 75 feet from the north curb of Ralph and Gertrude and continue underground until they merge with the drainage chamber at the intersection of Ralph and Elliot. During Hurricane Ida, that section was severely damaged and is no longer capable of managing the surface and stream tributary waters. In fact, that area now on a two inch, three inch rainstorm gets flooded um, very, very quickly. Uh, we will replace the two damaged corrugated metal culverts from Ralph and Gertrude to Ralph and Elliot. We'll, we'll be installing new sidewalks, new curbs, um, and we're doing roadway surface from Ralph Avenue all the way to New Street. Starting in September 2023 and ending construction in spring of 2024, we will be working on um, the Jefferson Avenue Wood Street drainage realignment improvements. We have completed eight borings from the end of Jefferson Avenue down to the intersection of Wood and Grove and received geotechnical data um, last week. Our surveyors completed the survey for the area. Our consulting engineer has mapped the tributary area and is currently working on a hydraulic, 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 hydrology study, sorry, analysis of the stream storm uh, system. All the storm water will drain into the existing 30 inch reinforced concrete pipe by the Maranek River. So our consultant, our consulting engineer will evaluate the maximum capacity of the storm line and make re recommendations for the appropriate return event um, for that proposed improvements. The major part of this project is to upgrade the existing storm drain pipes from wood to Jefferson, I'm sorry, from Jefferson to wood, eliminating the connection of the open channel behind Harold and Wood Street properties to establish a connection of storm drain on Wood Street. The open channel will be left in place which will only receive stormwater runoff from the homes in the immediate area, thereby reducing significantly the amount of water that it currently handles. Um, July, 2023, the Army Corps of Engineers expected to come here and present the final plans for the demolition and reconstruction of the Ward Avenue Bridge, which is gonna go from the current 45 foot opening uh, to an 85 foot opening and adding additional depth. Demolition will start in December, 2023 and reconstruction is scheduled to start I'm sorry, demolition will end in 20, uh, December 2023 and reconstruction 
will start in early spring of 2024. Finally, there are two large parcels of property that are for sale in the Washingtonville neighborhood. One is a 0.43 acre and the other is 0.3 acres. Um, the total for those two properties is $2.6 million. The return on investment from the purchase of those two properties and installing pervious asphalt paving and creating um, a passenger car parking lot as well as a commercial parking lot um, would be 10.75 years. So in order for us to um, consider that, we would need BOT's approval to ask for appraisals to pursue those two properties. We anticipate $200,000 a year in income from the parking um, permits that we would, we would sell. Um, that's why it would take us 10.75, almost 11 years. And that's it. Um, do you have an estimate of how much debris you can use for the rivers? I don't have that in my report, but I could, I could get you that. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's tons. I mean, oh, truckloads, 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 not, not three truckloads, like 30, 40, 50 yeah. truckloads. Yeah, a, a lot, a lot of stuff. Jerry, thank you very much. Yeah, uh, I, 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 we just want to reassure the public that we are just not sitting on our hands and waiting for the Army Corps of Engineers uh, to come and fix everything. We are doing what we can, uh, when we can, and how we can. And uh, that is a big change from how the village is operated for a long time, and we will keep building upon those successes. Uh, I really appreciate the hard work it, it took to get the Army Corps and the uh, state to give us a dredging permit. And uh, I know that we went back and forth with them a lot, but uh, we're gonna have a 10 year one now, right? Correct. Yeah. And can we also say that we got the permit through the assistance of Shelly Mayer and Steve Otis who helped us yeah. get the studies funded so that we could comply with the requirements that the DEC needed before we could dredge. So we should thank them mm -hmm. as well. Yep. Uh, thank you, Jerry. The, the next up is public hearings and the first public hearing is on PLLI 2023 to amend the village code to include fair and affordable housing for all zones in the village. Uh, this has been closed and sent to the county planning. All backup is from the 424-23 agenda. Uh, so I need a motion to open this public hearing. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, thank you. So I just want to get it right here. So this is uh, to provide a bonus. Uh, for building all affordable or 50% affordable uh, in the village of Mamaronek. Uh, I think it, it's a good idea. Uh, you know, we'd like to see every building that goes up from now on be all affordable because we've, we've had more than our share of uh, for-profit development over the years and we need to catch up on the other end. But uh, Nora, would you like to talk about this? I know it's your idea. Yeah, um, you know, we had, we were not one of the communities that were that had to adopt the model ordinance because we have had a fair number of affordable housing units in our village. Um, not enough, but we were we were a community that had done more than some of the other communities in Westchester. Um, and so we have not adopt we had not yet adopted the model ordinance. And the model ordinance basically requires requires communities to make a commitment to affordable housing um, and with in a, and not not necessarily projects that are done by affordable housing organizations and developers but requiring it in every for profit profit development so we had made a little bit of a start when we did the moratorium law and we required it in some of the commercial districts and now we're requiring it in all of the large multifamily districts. So I think it's a step in the right direction. It's not the end of the path, but it's a step. Right. It doesn't actually build any housing right now, but it hopefully will encourage developers to uh, be more aware that that's something that we want to see when they come in and do a development. And they have to. Yeah, they, have they, to. Have yeah. to. they have to. They have to. We'll take that into their calculus. Mm -hmm. Anybody from the community? Jen? <laughs> Jen, uh, 
Good evening, trustees. Thank you for the opportunity to make comment on your draft comprehensive plan. Um, my name is Jennifer Jacobs Guzman. I am a resident of the village. I reside at 634 Palmer Ave, the corner with Sidney Street. I'm before you tonight as a member of the Mamaroneck Coalition for Affordable Housing, as well as the Washingtonville Housing Alliance. Washingtonville Housing Alliance is a 42 plus year organization in the village, nonprofit, with 40 units of permanently affordable housing. We rarely have vacancies in our portfolio, and we're asked on a daily basis for housing referrals for members of the community seeking affordable housing options. The Mamaroneck Coalition for Affordable Housing was organized three years ago when Washingtonville Housing Alliance came together with the Community Resource Center and CURE, Communities Understanding Racism Through Education, to discuss the urgent housing needs in our community. <laughs> our coalition has since grown to include faith-based institutions in Mamaroneck, including St. Thomas Church and the Westchester Jewish Center, as well as participation from planning, business, and social service <laughs> experts. We have three key goals, the first being to preserve existing affordable housing in the community while protecting tenants' rights. The second is to expand affordable op options in Mamaroneck, particularly for rents currently unmet in the market, focusing on those at 60% and below the area median. And third, to promote education and dialogue around affordable housing <clears throat> while adopting an equity lens in our work. We are very happy to see the community's affordable housing needs highlighted more prominently in the updated comprehensive plan, and we applaud the village on recent steps to actualize some of the planning by committing to affordable housing uses on the deteriorating parking infrastructure across the street. Whenever underutilized or detained, detained public sites can be used to bring housing to our community, it is a win for everyone, with an expanded tax base and more options for housing at a variety of incomes. In light of our three core goals, I would like to highlight just a few key recommendations that we believe are critical to focus on with your updated comprehensive plan. Under our goal of preserving existing affordable housing, the comp plan references the rapid loss of affordable units and cites the enormous percentage of our Mamaroneck renters who are paying more than half of their household income on rent. But it doesn't identify examples of policies or incentives that would preserve our existing affordable housing stock. We would really encourage um, a, sort of a relook at the comprehensive plan to maybe identify some concrete commitments or examples of how we could preserve existing affordable housing in the village. This might be through tax incentives or promoting existing government programs such as the Landlord Tenant Assistance Program, which is run by the Westchester County, where eligible landlords and owners might receive up to $25,000 per rental unit that qualifies toward needed repairs under the program in exchange for maintaining rent increases at certain levels. The second set of recommendations is around our goal of expanding affordable housing options. In addition to supporting the model ordinance, which is a great idea, we would encourage the village to strengthen our comp plan by explicitly defining affordability in rental housing as housing that's restricted for at least 30 years at or below 60% of the area median income. This is possible and common from a financing perspective and can help ensure resources are focused on the gaps in our housing stock. In addition, we would like the village to commit to identifying more public sites for affordable housing uses. Um, lastly, we have offered prior comment on the plan's inclusion of several areas of the plan that may make it more difficult for affordable housing development in the future by proposing reduced density or through the addition of duplicative requirements or restrictions, such as the prohibition of any construction within 50 feet of a water body emptying into Long Island Sound or its tributaries. Previously, this was subject to a planning board permit and a pathway should once again exist that would allow for thoughtful, ecologically sound proposals. This example and others that reduce the potential for development should be re-examined with our communities critical affordable housing needs in mind. Uh, thank you very much for your time and consideration. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Any other public comment? Oh, 
Okay. I think that this is, you know, we're going to have another hearing directly after this about the comprehensive plan. Uh, but this is, uh, I think, a, a, a good uh, step in the path toward making this community more affordable. Uh, would anybody like to close the public hearing? I will I move to close the public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Now I need a motion if, uh, to adopt the new law. Second. Uh, Sally, please call. What? what? Do so, we... so the, the, Go ahead. The resolution that you have is actually referring it for advisory consistency. Oh, yes. Because uh, that hasn't been done yet. So oh, that's right. Adopted, yeah, it has to get, to get over through that process. I thought that was the comp plan. Is this too? It's both. Yeah, this, this was... Okay. Flagged. Yeah, so, I, I, I applied that it hadn't actually gone yet. Uh, I thought it was yeah. just for the comp plan. I thought it was just for the comp plan. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. It's also unlisted, so it is subject to that. Okay, so uh, the, please scratch that motion. Uh, so that we're not, well, yeah. We, no, we're, we're not going to close, close the public hearing. And I prepared a, a CAF for, for you. And That's for right. All right, so, so we need a motion to refer this to the HCCMC. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We need a motion to adjourn this hearing. Uh, let's adjourn it to the first meeting in July, because that would give uh, HCMC. Because oh, we, we do two weeks HCMC. Third week, so this would they, they would have time for this. If yeah, they, they get it. I, they, well, they have to. Let, let, they, let's, they have to get it. They have to. The, I'm fine with doing it. We have to get it to them so they can get it. Yeah. Greg, you can get it to them quickly. Yeah, it, it'll be on the same timeline as the comprehensive plan. So it'll be, it, we've actually made spots on their agenda already for, for these items, anticipating that they're for. And when's the meeting? meeting. Next week. Next, next, next week. Next week. Next week. Mm -hmm. right, I'm fine for doing it in two weeks, but I don't know if they'll have it back yet. But we could just, you know, adjourn it again. Adjourn it for two weeks. Adjourn it for two weeks. Okay. And we'll make it. If we don't have it back by like the Thursday before the meeting, we have a note on the agenda that it will be adjourned. No, we will have to open the meeting and adjourn again. Right. Yeah. But I, I, Either, I don't want to have everybody come for nothing. That's all. Well, we, oh, we could put, I, I could see uh, you talk about noticing the public. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. But we have to actually, if we adjourn it, we have to actually open it and adjourn it. Uh, all right. I'll make a motion to adjourn this uh, hearing until the 26th of June. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, the next is we need to open public hearing on comprehensive plan update and referral to H to HCZMC. Okay. Uh, need to open a public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So just so you know, at the beginning, this this is going to be open, uh, and, and I don't think we should close this until July. No. I think we should give people time uh, to you know digest it, and we should you know take their input and see what we want to change. Uh, it doesn't have to be renoticed if we change it. Is that right, Bob? Correct. So it's not like a, it's, it's a law that has to be renoticed all over again. Okay. Uh, so, comprehensive. Greg, why don't you give us, uh, Mr. Cutler? Why don't you give us a little introduction to the comprehensive plan? Oh, we have Neil here, right? Nice. I'm sorry, Neil. I didn't see you back there. It's quite all right. That was not exactly what happened. Um, okay. Thank you. Um, my name is Neil Desai, uh, principal planner at H and H, uh, formerly known as Hardenstein Hanover. Uh, I. Uh, it's it's uh, I've been working with the village now for six years and, and uh, I'm happy to see this um, uh, getting close to the, the public hearing and the, and the final. Uh, uh, oh, sorry, I don't control the slides, right? So I need to give Damn. Jerry, uh, Jerry, uh, Jerry the uh, uh, next slide, please. Um, thank you. Everyone. So so we've been at this since uh, about 2017, actually. Um, the, the, there's been a number of drafts of the plan that have been produced for 2019 being the first one, and then we all know what happened uh, after 2020. But there's also the moratorium study as well, which has been pushing for the, the, the chunk of eight months or so uh, from the conference of plan, but also informed the conference of plan as well. 
and um, we resumed. Um, uh, so this is actually the sixth, uh, the sixth uh, draft of the of the of the comprehensive, comprehensive plan. So it's been through a lot of gears. Uh, and the next slide, please. I just want to touch upon uh, the community engagement that went on. Um, in the first phase prior to COVID, which and there was a, a lot of community engagement, um, there still is the website planvom.org. Uh, there was an environmental sustainability survey that helped inform um, the sustainability section. Now, I want to say that um, the, the there was a different board at the time as well. Some of the uh, board are still here, but uh, there was a different board and the priorities for the plan initially in 2017 were um, residential neighborhood character, and uh, sustainability uh, with resilience as well. So, and so that's reflected in the current draft. We did a lot of work uh, under residential neighborhoods, which is chapter 4C uh, in this comprehensive plan. And so, you know, we, we retained a lot of that work. Uh, we didn't, um, but it's it's all a matter of, you know, what the priorities are in the end. And so I'll talk about how, how the priorities are allocated. But we had diverse workshops. We, uh, we participated in a number, number, number of festivals. Um, uh, we had a, a, a that was a very busy year getting to know the village and the people of the village, and uh, it, was, it was really great. Now, uh, if you can go to the next slide, please, Jerry. Uh, now, we're in terms of like the, the timeline we had to move now from where we left off to where we are today, uh, we thought that the a good way to really get tabs on, on the community was to do a, a community survey in 2022, and that was very uh, key in terms of. Uh, it was both done in English and Spanish, and uh, it was very key in terms of uh, helping to get a sense of the priorities and how they may have shifted. Um, and so, uh, and, and if you go to the next slide, um, I'll, I'll, there's a couple of things. There's there's actually some handouts outside which uh, you may or may not uh, have taken, but uh, this is the pretty important page in the comp plan. It's a it's a hundred and fifty some odd page document, so I, I didn't make copies of that, but. This is really key, which is the statement of goals and objectives, essentially the priority topics. Um, and that's part of the plan. And then there's something called the, the, the index of recommendations. And that's also there. This is, so instead of having to sift through the document, this is a handy index of all the recommendations. For now, it's an index of recommendations for you all, uh, but also it's intended to be an editable Word document for uh, the village to utilize as a way to begin to allocate different levels of priority to each of the strategies within the plan. And so this is really a tool. This is just one, one representation of it on, on, uh, that we have here, but it'll actually be live as a Word document and be useful for the village to begin to uh, begin to look at, you know, how much funding will, you know, what partners yeah. do we need to work for? What, how much operating budget will this take? So just a kind of planning tool for, for the village. Excellent. Uh, and then you also, one other, the third part of uh, what uh, of, of what you might have seen both from the e news as well as on the, the project website is the comment response table. So this is the official comment period uh, after the publication of the um, of the March I think it was the March first uh, 2023 draft. And so everybody's comments have been have been put out into this table for everyone to see as well as our responses to the comments. Uh, and uh, uh, and then you if there's some of them we appreciate everybody's comments. Some of them were errors people fixed, uh, people suggested uh, fixing, uh, things that were missing, they had com substantive comments about different suggestions about, uh, about housing. Um, if they ran, they, they ranged, uh, they ranged from, uh, you know, A to Z. So I really appreciate the, the comments that people submitted. And, you know, we took time to really read all the comments and, and identify if there's, you know, something that needed to change in the plan. Uh, or a new recommendation to be added or something to be corrected. So appreciate that. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, this is essentially what I was handing out. This is, these are the key, this is like a, the, the key, the key page in the plan and uh, it's the village priorities. And you can see in shorthand, flood mitigation and resilience uh, uh, is, is the top, top priority. And that certainly came out loud and clear during the community survey. Um, safe streets for walking and biking, affordable housing, environmentally sustainable, uh, updating and modernizing zoning code and supporting business and economic development. I'm just gonna go through uh, each of, if you can go to the next slide, please, Jerry. Uh, just a brief brief bit on each of these topic areas. Uh, we, you know, the, the Army Corps of Engineers 
plan, Feldress Management Project is the found, is a foundational project, but we know that there's much, much more to do. And so this section is really one that changed the most since the previous versions of the plan in 2020 uh, in, in cooperation with the Flood Mitigation Advisory Committee. Um, the recommendations are organized into uh, by, by type of, of, of activity, outreach engagement, to further studies and plans, uh, policies and regulatory actions to do with flooding and stormwater management. Um, technology backup and protection of early warning systems, land acquisition, and infrastructure investments, whether it's for the seawall or so this is a kind of a more a much more thicker and a deeper section than it was in the previous uh, 2020 plan. So this is just a general uh, general framework of, of how that chapter is organized in terms of the recommendations. Next slide, please. Um, safe streets for walking and biking. I think one of the, uh, I worked with a lot of the committees, uh, the traffic commission had the idea, so uh, give them credit for it to organize an open streets day. So there's a couple of things, you know, I think, um, you know, people recognize the Merrimack as a walkable place, but I think there's still a lot of work to make it become actually pedestrian, safe for pedestrians and, and, and safe for pedestrians to actually walk through the streets. So I think, you know, organizing Open Streets Day is a, is a nice uh, concept to just build uh, build recognition of, of the importance of walking and being able to bike in the village, close off a street. I thought it was just a nice recommendation that the traffic commission suggested to highlight. Beyond that also is just the actual infrastructure of the village, preparing a village-wide plan for bicycle facilities and amenities, as well as for preparing a, a village-wide plan for walkability and pedestrian safety. And I think one of the challenges of, of my work as a consultant on this was that a lot, uh, a lot of things have been, you know, before ink has dried, uh, I find out that Merrick has, has already started, you know, moving forward on a lot of initiatives. So um, you'll see that, you know, while the traffic commission has done, uh, in, in the plan, you'll see that, you know, where possible we recognize what, what has been done already as well as looking ahead to what needs to be done. Uh, next slide, please. For affordable housing, I think we, uh, the, again, these are some of the recommendations where, you know, the village has already moved forward on. Uh, 4A15 is every recommendation is given a number and that 4A means chapter 4A15, uh, requiring affordable housing units to be constructed within new multi-unit developments, which is uh, what was previous part of public consumption or previous public hearing. Um, Another, uh, there's an, a number of uh, recommendations listed under 4A-15 that support the broader concept of affordable development, development of affordable housing, expanding the C2 zoning district uh, up to the, what, I, what was done was up, up to the under parking deck. Uh, so that means essentially using village property for affordable housing development, where, where it makes sense. And 4A-18, I think this is really important. You know, there's, there's a development side to this, but there's also a, tenant side to this, uh, uh, protecting, of, of, uh, you know, how do we retain affordable housing and how do we, how, are, how can tenants be protected? And so, um, you know, there's a recommendation and I think the village has already moved forward even before this uh, was put in the document was to have an affordable housing committee uh, structure to, to, to help um, with a, a number of the programs that's some of the programs that can be implemented, working with some of the partners, such as the, the Coalition for Affordable Housing, the CRC, and, and, and other groups, to um, uh, look not only at, at development of affordable housing, but also uh, retention and protecting tenants and helping them stay in, put in their existing uh, homes. Next slide. Uh, this was one of this is a very thick section because it was one of the priorities that emerged from the very beginning of the plan, but it organizes, uh, really what this chapter does, it's organized in terms of topic. So there's clean water, clean air, and all of that's based on a, a survey we had done in 2019. And so the, the, the order, the sequence of the things, of the, of the items are, is based on what was most important to people in the survey. So clean water being number one, clean air number two, zero waste number three, and so on. And so this, there's there's so many different strategies within this very thick section, but it complements the village's participation in climate smart communities and clean energy communities. Um, again, the community environment and the climate smart communities task force again has, uh, you know, before they dried, they've, they've, they've already adopted a lot of things. So part of the work of updating the comprehensive plan from the previous version, not, not the 12 version, but 
the, the drafts from 2020 before COVID were just making sure we identify what things have already been accomplished and, and, and by the committee and what, what still needs to be done. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, zoning figures heavily in this um, in terms of uh, comprehensive zoning update and to update, modernize, and improve the village zoning code. So there's several aspects of this, which is just the legibility of the code, the structure, uh, removing obstacles. And so those details, you know, they're, they're, that, that's the, the main recommendation to us to update and modernize the code. And there's a number of uh, suggestions provided uh, working with the planning board and the planner that are included in, in the comp plan of things that need to be looked at. Um, th there's a number of recommendations we're, we're pertaining to zoning and subdivision recommendations in residential neighborhoods, which uh, I mentioned chapter 4C, residential neighborhoods, which was a uh, one of the priorities. So we've maintained that that section largely with some updates. Um, and then another recommendation, I think affordable, especially dwelling units was something that was in the prior, uh, prior of our drafts of this plan. And um, as, a, as a supplement to the affordable housing strategy is exploring uh, permitting accessory dwelling units. Next slide. And the, 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 the last priority, and, and I think that we'll open it up is uh, business and economic development. Um, uh, the, the map on the right, um, we, what we had done is we identified in the, in the plan, we go into, we, we identify what's called character districts. And this came from thinking, of, this came from thinking that was developed during the Moral Power Study. How can we break up all these corridors into pieces that make sense? And so the pieces that make sense, meaning looking at them, not just as commercial, uh, not just by use, but in terms of use and form. And, you, and when you look at that way, you'll realize that you know, while Halstead Avenue is a commercial corridor, it is it is all it is C1 zone C1, but it has very different characteristics from this the C1 that zone property that you might see on, on East Post Road and West Post Road. So that's just a kind of a way to look at the different corridors and developing revitalization strategies for each of these character districts, these pieces of the corridors. And and some of them also are districts, like the maker zone is a very identifiable district, the industrial area. Um, and, and again, collaborating with, with the Chamber of Commerce business owners and the necessary municipalities. So um, that's, that's the brief recap you know, overview of, of, of the priority areas. There's, there's a lot in the plan. There's like, the index here you can pick up out there if you haven't, and the, the main priority sheet. And um, if there's anything else, Greg, that you wanted to add, or that's... Thanks. I think you covered, you know, really the, the main points about this. You know, at this point in the process, mm -hmm. we're opening the public hearing, we presented, Neil and I presented before the Westchester County Planning Board. It has to go to our proposal for advisory consistency. We prepared the documents to, to send to them. So that's, that's what we're in the process. And you want to hear from the public? When do we hear back from the Westchester County Planning Board? Um, we, we should hear soon. They did not give me any specific deadlines, but we presented to them last Tuesday. Uh, and so it's been, it'll be a week tomorrow. And so we should, we should hear back within this week or next week. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Would anybody from the public like to uh, ask a question or address the board? It's on a comprehensive plan. Guadalupe. Charles Guadagnolo, just wanted to note I'm not here in my capacity for the budget committee. Um, wanted to thank everybody for their incredible amount of work that's going to be done. It's a fairly massive effort, it's really appreciated. Uh, I'll be quick. Um, my comment number 12 um, basically looks at neighborhoods that are um, currently zoned with single family. Mm -hmm neighborhoods, but that are largely comprised of two family homes. And the idea is to consider uh, updating the zoning map uh, to revise these areas to be two family homes. Um, I attached a map um, with some sample areas um, and you can see that the lots that are in orange are the two family homes that basically blanket single family districts. 
and it hits home on two of the priorities that were outlined, uh, one being affordable housing and then the other being zoning map updates. So the zoning map update would be obvious, but then with respect to the affordable housing, what this can accomplish is particularly with respect to middle income housing stock uh, that you'll take large numbers of single family homes that can then be uh, converted into legal two families and then make those affordable uh, and available. So it's pretty, it's pretty simple. It's, it's low hanging fruit. Um, I work for a big um, multifamily developer that does projects like the Mason. And as you guys know, it takes years often to go through the entitlement process. And if you take 150 unit development that has 10% affordable housing, that would be 15 units. Whereas you can look at some of these neighborhoods and streets that you would have access to more than 15 per street times X number of streets in areas throughout the community. So I think it would make sense. Um, I really appreciate the formal response um, that this is going to be looked at with additional study. And then hopefully that can translate into uh, either the board or the planning board making uh, recommendations to update the what's only map accordingly. Uh, it's clear. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. No, just if, if you can ask, please come to the mic. All right. Just, yeah. Go ahead. You, Ricky. Um, so, thank you, everybody, for all this, you know, these studies and work that's going into our community. Um, I know that uh, everybody's looking to get more affordable housing for everybody, have more equitable community for everybody, and have everybody get a fair chance, a uh, fair shake it, you know, developing their own lives and their own families. Um, I do, however, see that there is still a distinct lack of effort or study put into how all of these additional families and people into our communities is going to affect things like our schools, right? Our school is at capacity. I know people think that it's decreasing by a hundred kids per year. That was during COVID. That was at other external you know, um, effects that were driving those changes. And that is over a uh, really with uh, nearly 5,000 students, right? So 5,500, you know, out of 100 out of that many is not a whole lot, right? Our elementary school that my children go to is has been expanded three times. They just built two, like, so many more classrooms to accommodate the increased student load. If we want to build 50 more units, Turn single families into multifamilies. How many more students can we accommodate in our schools? How many? Nobody has provided that answer. How big will the, the high school need to be? How many more classrooms will we need? How many more teachers will we need? How much more will that cost? I don't think, I, I, and you know, you can paint it in a way that you think I'm against affordable housing. I am not, okay? I didn't grow up with a silver spoon in my mouth. We were working, you know, working with us down. I worked my way in this community for at least is to have the student-teacher ratios that we have, to have the, the, to give my kids the opportunity and the resources of which this community does provide them. If we continue to overburden our system with more and more people. It doesn't matter who they are, whether they're wealthy or not. There is only so much space, so much time, so much effort that our schools can provide our, our kids. If you want to turn it into New Rochelle, let's get, put up some high rises. Why not? Build another high school. Well, we can't because there's no space. Do our kids go out and play in the playground? No, we can't. Because they're playing on concrete and they use the, the fields for, for Little League or some other sport you know, after three o'clock. I know that 
the board is trying to prevent Hampshire Country Club from turning their property into developments, correct? Is that correct? Right? Why is that? It's a question the board. The, the, the board is not, what the board is doing is defending the planning board's decision. The board has not had okay. a, a hand okay. in that. So I'd ask the planning board, why are, why are we trying to prevent them from developing their, their space, right? Uh, folks, please do not call up from the audience. And so is half of our town, right? Do we help them? No, we let it flood year after year. I know we have we have a plan in place now because we've done studies, but the Army Corps of Engineers did their study in 2001, was it? They originally did this? 22 years later, we still haven't done anything? 2007 after that flood. Must have been looking at the report, but still, it's a very long time. It's a very long time to have done nothing. Uh, I'll just, I'll get to it quick. Just saying, I also don't, believe that Hampshire should be done, right? But if they shouldn't, the town shouldn't either. We should be selling public land to developers for who knows what profit, right? Reworking the zoning, the zoning laws to incorporate, you know, a required number of affordable units, that's great. It does, it, it provides, you know, a direction for developers that if they want to develop, they, they must provide X number of units for the house, that's great. But we still, like we could use it for, for refurbishments or, or renovations of existing buildings, but that any more units in our district would be disastrous. It would be disastrous. I don't think anybody is really looking at it from an educational point of view, okay? From community-based, fine. But our schools are constantly being overstressed. And I would really like it if somebody from the Board of Education was here to provide their input. So I guarantee you they would be saying the same thing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Hello, thank you so much um, for having us tonight. I'm also from the Marinette Coalition for Affordable Housing. And I just wanted to respond. Just, uh, identify yourself. Please. Oh, yeah, hi, I'm Pauline. Um, so I just wanted to respond to the previous uh, gentleman's question. And I think there's a really helpful Board of Education presentation from the March 7th budget meeting. I don't know if you looked at that, but it um, not only talks about school enrollment, but it looks at the number of empty seats in the district. Do we have address the oh, board? Oh, I'm sorry. Don't okay. address so um, on March 7th of this year, as part of the budget presentation, the Board of Education looked at the empty seats in the elementary schools. And so basically all of the classes are capped at 22 students. And so what they do is they make the number of sections based on the current students. And then they say empty seats are the additional seats that are open because they don't have enough kids to fill that class. So I'm just gonna read to you guys the available projected seats according to the Board of Education uh, from this year. So for Central, it is 98. For Chatsworth, it is 54. For MAS, 77. And for Murray, it's 62. And the total is 91. So I just wanted to add that <laughs> perspective to this conversation. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. The, the, the lady, did you want to ask a question? Would you come to the mic? No, would you please? Uh, uh, people can't hear you at home. It's for the folks who are playing along with the home version. Good evening. Uh, my name is Minnie Emerton, um, and um, I live in the... Uh, please, the lady's trying to talk. Unincorporated town of Mimarinic, but I taught in the village of Mimarinic at Mimarinic School for many years, so Mimarinic Village is very close to my heart. Okay. My question about the making one house into two is how do you make that unit affordable. My assumption is they're very high-end houses. If they're big enough to have two things, how do you make them affordable? Just, I don't yeah. understand. That, thank you. That, that's a question the board will, will, will look at. But thank you. I appreciate that. And that's a valid question. Like he's ready. <laughs> we can't have people talk.
And please address your comments to the board. Hi, everyone. Hello. My name is um, Abby Roberts. I live at 30 Old Coast Road in Minnick. Uh, it's great to see all the progress on um, the comprehensive plan. And a huge thanks to Neil, by the way. I think he's been hearing from me um, since 2017. <laughs> so um, it's, it's a good reminder of uh, the persistence that it takes to get things done um, sometimes. So um, I'm here as a private citizen, but um, you know, I think my point of view has been informed by my prior tenure on the Traffic Commission. Um, and as chair of the Traffic Commission and a couple of years on the zoning. Board. Um, I'm also a parent with two children, one of which is in um, Central School. So um, I, I also wanted to address quickly the school point as well. Um, I can only address my own um, Central School point, but I, I do want to say that um, as, far, as, as much as I love um, having such a great parent teacher ratio for my kids, uh, we have a lot of space in Central. It's like a secret gem. I love it. but um, you know, from an overarching planning perspective, I don't think it would be fair to say that the school is stretched. So um, the, the points I wanted to make um, for the comprehensive plan were two. The first is I just wanted to double down on the importance of walkability. As part of the traffic commission, we did quite a number of walking studies um, throughout Mamaroneck, really focusing on the safety of our children and um, safe students. Um, safe routes to school, but also just the walkability of the community. Um, we published a number of studies uh, kind of identifying areas for additional sidewalks and bike routes and so on. So I do want to emphasize um, that those are in existence and it would be great to see those prioritized through the budget process so that that gets done, um, you know, and is part of our prioritization. I noticed we just we paved four roads. That's really nice, but um, the sidewalks are mostly still not done um, eight years later. So that's one. Um, the other point I wanted to make, uh, and this goes to the affordable housing point, is that one area that um, we, I kind of felt was missing is, it's called the missing middle, right? Um, so it's not just affordable housing that's in trouble in Mamaroneg, it's, it's middle income housing as well. And Mamaroneg has a really long, history of middle class roots and socioeconomic diversity. And in fact, that's why my husband and I chose to move back here. Um, he's third generation of Ameronek. And I saw the group of friends, and the presence he had growing up here, which was so much more diverse than my own upbringing. And it really mattered to us. And I know it matters to a lot of our neighbors. And we've really seen over the years through the gentrification, how more and more people are getting shut out of our neighborhood um, due to the increased costs of, um, of living here um, and gentrification. So um, going back to kind of the, the point about zoning, um, there is this concept called of zoning, which we talked about, and it's not fancy houses. Um, just to answer your question, a lot of these are old. Our house is from 1880 believe it or not. So it's not about making fancy new homes um, into two, two families. It's making old homes that can fit two families or three families into two or three families um, so that more families can live in the Marinette. Um, it's a strategy that's been employed by a number of other cities around here. And I think as um, Charles mentioned, you can actually get a lot more homes done more quickly than relying on um, expensive development processes. So, um, that would, those were some of my overarching comments. I think the, the one really big action point is I am hoping that we will update the zoning map based on the COP plan. Um, our zoning map has not been updated, I believe, since 1968. I could be wrong about that exact date, but it's been a very, very long time, which is why the zoning map and our actual zoning is so different from one another, where you have streets, as Charles was saying, that are um, mostly or half non-conforming um, from their past because we haven't updated it for, I'm going to say, like 60 years. 
So if we can update the zoning map, that will kind of turn this comprehensive plan into reality. Um, so that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Go ahead. Hi, I'm, I'm Greg DeAngelis, 1215, Stony Brook Avenue. Um, I'm an architect in, in the village, as you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you do. Um, and, and first of all, actually, I want to thank you all for bringing Greg Cutler back <laughs> to our village. So that's a. Uh, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back. And I think this comprehensive plan, I haven't been through it all, but it, it's it's amazingly, you know, um, thorough and thoughtful. And there's really a lot of good stuff in here. So kudos to, to Neil and his team. Um, just a couple of thoughts. I, I'm you know, impressed also that we're getting the maker zone in the industrial area. You talked about GMs. That there's potential there. There's a lot of good businesses and services that exist there. We want to help them continue to thrive, but there are a lot of opportunities for other things as well. Um, I like the concept of developing in the downtown and the crossover to the riverfront. I think that's something we remember talking about in 2012. Um, and just a couple more comments on the uh, affordable housing. First of all, I think affordable housing makes the community stronger. This is not just giving, giving opportunities for people to get affordable housing, but I, I see it you know, as any organization or companies, um, variety of people that you have, the different spheres that they come from, makes it a stronger community, more people to contribute in different ways. Um, and the whole concept of the affordable, I'm sure members of the board all know this, but the, the um, you know, accessory going units, they're not just, they're not always whole families that are going into these. Sometimes it could be a, a garage that's renovated. It could be a basement with legal exits and, and egress that can be, um, you know, provide an apartment for, for, for a, a young person getting started, coming back from college, working working a trade or whatever, uh, provides opportunities for seniors to stay longer because they can rent out a part of their house. So uh, I think it is a little hanging for me. I think it's really, um, and I think it, it, yes, it has to be looked at um, schools and, and enrollment needs to be looked at. It should be, um, and I know there's studies out there and, and how many more cars are getting parked on the street, but that is generally the, the trend is people don't need as many cars and they're out of options. So um, I, I just commend or, or encourage the board to really seriously consider that. I think it's worthwhile. Thank you. Thank, yeah, thank you. you. Thanks, Brian. Um, you know, I, I was stuck in traffic and listening to NPO recently, and they had a show on about the brain drain uh, from the East Coast to uh, you know cities in the Midwest. And it was because people graduating uh, college, young people graduating college, and they can't afford to live in the cities on the East Coast. So they're going to Kansas City and they're, they're, they're going to Shreveport and they're going you know, to uh, places in Ohio and it, because their, their talents are so uh, commutable now that they don't have to be in one place, that they could take what they've learned and they could take what they've, you know, uh, skills that they've gotten through their education and make it portable and they can work from anywhere. So they don't have to be in downtown Manhattan. They don't have to be in Boston. They don't have to be in Washington, DC. And if we wanna keep those folks, you know, the, the, this isn't just about folks, you know, who are, uh, you know, like myself, just high school graduates. The, the, this is uh, folks that have college educations that are leaving the community because, you know, you, you get out of college, the average young person is owing a lot of money and maybe they get a good job and maybe they're making 70, $80,000 a year and you can't afford to live around here. And I see it with my own children. Uh, so when, when people talk about you know, what, what's the target area, target area is everyone, all of us, you know, senior citizens, people graduating college, uh, people who work uh, you know, a, 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 tr a building trade, people who work uh, you know, a, with their hands and people who also work behind desks every day. This is something that's affecting every segment of society all throughout, definitely the East Coast. And what, you know, what I've talked to, to people, my friends on the West Coast there too. So you know, it's hard enough to keep families together. Uh, but you know, with, uh, if, if you have uh, children and they can't afford to remain where you are, it, it, uh, it makes life harder for everybody. 
so I just wanted to throw that in there. Uh, so does anybody else want to comment? Anybody on the board want to comment? I just said, I mean, I, I, I read this through, actually read it through, and uh, was delighted by so much of it to see that we're already on the right track in a lot of ways. I, I was delighted to see uh, traffic circles mentioned uh, and uh, <laughs> whether they'll ever actually happen or not. <laughs> and and, and, and uh, I remind the public that this is a, um, a guide, but it's not a, it's not a law and uh, it, it, it's, it's intended to be a blueprint for the future, for the, the village, the way we imagine it can be as it grows, because you can either resist growth, well, you can either channel growth and, 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 and direct it, or you can resist it and let it direct you. And, uh, and that's, you know, that's, this is the way to, uh, to channel it. So uh, I'm, uh, I think it's a wonderful document and uh, we would be happy to receive uh, comments from anybody on what uh, is in if they like or don't like uh, as we go forward. And I hope that people will read it and come to us uh, in subsequent meetings. Anybody else? Uh, I go? No, 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 go, go. I just was, thought the gentleman was coming up. I didn't, I didn't know. Oh, that's yes, what yes. I was saying. Oh. <laughs> okay. Go ahead, sir. Uh, so regarding turning single family into dual family, noticing a lot of people are moving back to Amaranek. A lot of people are selling their homes in, uh, I guess, less affordable places, large homes, and they're coming into Amaranek and buying up the home too. Um, so they're raising their kids in these other, other towns, um, going to those schools, and then they're coming here and buying these homes. So now families with children, that want to buy in here can't. So now our plan is to split these homes, single family homes into two family homes. It just doesn't make sense to me. Again, Monday Avenue this weekend, two or three times. Couldn't find parking just to run in and grab something. 25 minutes to try to find parking. So, and that's just because we're coming from somewhere else. Uh, so a lot of times we're forced to just drive home and then walk to the village, which is good, it's fine. But we, we're dealing with overcrowding. We're dealing with traffic that is insane. We're dealing with congestion. We still haven't dealt with the flooding. Okay, we're dealing with the flooding, but we're not really dealing with the flood. So we wanted to, we want to add more congestion. And as far as cars go, we're not getting less cars. People, there are families with four cars, four cars. I've been here a long time. We came up from Queens. If we want to turn Mamaronic into Queens, you're doing a good job. It's getting overcrowded. There's no parking. You can't, I used to, as a kid, I used to walk down to Mamaronic Avenue School. It was, it was easy. We had crossing guards at every, every corner. You, I'm, I'm afraid to let my kids walk. <laughs> it is crazy for a lot of reasons. So what are we doing? That's the first major thing. And then the next thing is there's four smoke shops on the avenue or potentially four smoke shops. You as the board of trustees and as the mayor have the ability to shut these places of vices down. They're no good for the community. They're doing nothing for the community. But we're, we're opening them up as convenience stores. So you sell some Pringles, some bounty tissues, but in the back, you got all your bombs and your hookahs and everything else. What is that telling our children? This is what my Marinick's about. I'd really like to see what the plan is to clean this area up. Otherwise, we are going to turn into a city and in the wrong sense. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Else on the board? Nor are you going to say something? No, well, I, just, I, I actually was going to follow up on what Charles and Abby both said. And I think that um, what they were talking about was a, a, a couple of neighborhoods or a couple of streets that were rezoned, that were two, that are, that are basically two family neighborhoods that were rezoned in 1968 for single family. And that was aspirational. 
but it didn't come to fruition. So what they so what the houses are now are pre-existing non-conforming and it's hard to alter them or renovate them because they have to be brought up to a single family standard. But in but since 1968, people haven't wanted to build single family houses in that area. So I think that is the that's a specific rezoning. It's not wholesale rezoning of neighborhoods that are single family and full of single family houses. And I think that I just wanted to clarify that point. Matt, mm -hmm. just wanted to address that. No, that's comment. So, I live in a single-family zoned neighborhood that does have already a lot of two-family houses. They are that way because they're grandfathered in. Mm -hmm. Okay, is you know, does that mean that we should then make all like let all of the other single-family houses become two-family? I don't think so. I think that the, the way it was zoned in 1968 is what their their ambitions were for the town to, to prevent these houses that were illegally subdivided already from continuing to be so. Because it was, you know, it wasn't essentially a single family house. It's just that the zoning didn't explicitly forbid it. So then it's now like, okay, we put on the books, now it's single family. You can't take the, the house across the street from me is grandfathered in as a two family house. It has been a three family house for as long as I've lived there. And they've continued to break the law for the entirety of for the last eight years, nine years now. A new owner recently came to take over that, that house and has continued to run it as a three family house. The previous owner, you know, I, I didn't want to make any quarrels with it. There was an older gentleman, obviously he couldn't go anywhere else. He's lived there for 60 years. He passed away. He, he had a, another old, older gentleman that lived with him and rented out rooms or the second floor. Lovely first, lovely individual, no problems. He had nowhere else to go. I wouldn't, there, you know, to make us think and, and have that re remedy. So things went on. There's also another middle-aged man that lived in the basement, that illegal apartment in the basement. Now it is continued. Now there's cars parking in front of my house, like all the time, coming in and out. There's people throwing parties. You know, is, is this what we want our single family house housing to serve to be? Is it to, is it to be? You know, just people coming and going, renting out every single room in their house because nobody's going to stop them. And now it's a multifamily zone. I don't think that's the direction that we should be going. You know, if, you know granted, this grandfather then so be it. But it should, it should, it should be conforming to that two-family restriction as well, right? And everybody, you know, should be conforming to the, you know, the zoning as it is. We have many houses that don't conform. And I don't think that because they don't conform that we should then loosen the laws, the codes and restrictions to let them then fall under a, a conforming condition, but rather we should be enforcing our restrictions, our laws and our codes so that those, those houses that are running you know, not compliance are remedied. So, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, Neil Desai, uh, Adrian, I just want to confirm what the comprehensive plan says regarding this and what it doesn't. The comprehensive plan does not make any recommendation that says that uh, these uh, multifamily or two-family homes should, or, or single-family homes should become two-family or, or any zoning. It's that we got questions from both perspectives. We have questions from saying there's a there's a bunch of two-family houses in our neighborhood. How, how are you going to stop that? And then there's the other side, which is how can we have more of that? And so, you know, and that, I think all the arguments are, are, you know, for and against are very good, but the comprehensive plan isn't isn't the place to debate that specific argument. So merely it doesn't take a position. It doesn't take a position because that would that would that would be 
that's a very big, a very big uh, uh, that's decision a, to make. It's a, so, it's a legislative question. Yeah, it's a very important question that needs to be examined for all the reasons that people have been talking about affordability, you know, congestion. And so the mere recommend, so in order to kind of address the fact that people are asking the question in terms of from both viewpoints, there is a recommendation to explore. I mean, it's a very, it's a, I mean, it's a, it's, it's something, but we need to explore how to, how to treat, you know, how to look at these uh, properties into the future, um, what should happen. And so that's when the, the kind of the, the discussion and debate would happen in, a, in, a, in another process, you know, later on. So the comp plan itself doesn't make a, a, a definitive position regarding that. Uh, regarding um, thank you zoning. So, thank you very much. And, and I also just wanted to add to that. I think that when when and if the board does want to pursue exploring that, you could also look in. It, it wouldn't be potentially wouldn't be a wholesale, you know, item. It might be something that you want to look at specific districts for. So just it's a board decision for, for later on. Thank you. Understood. There, uh, Dina Lee Martinez, 782 Old White Plains Road, also 134 Center Avenue. Um, I also just, I want to thank Neil for clarifying that and thank you all for considering the fact that whether, whatever you decide on affordable housing or rezoning, that like everything else, there is an ebb and flow. It does, like, as you mentioned, Mayor Murphy, People are leaving the community and people will come to the community like they've done for decades and centuries. Um, and so I just want to emphasize that um, I think this leadership is considering things from a positive perspective and not from a fear. And I really appreciate that. Um, there will be communities that come in and there will be communities that leave. Um, Mamaronic and the village of Mamaronic. Uh, and also, if we do consider affordable housing, then people wouldn't have to double up so much. Um, so when we're making housing affordable, they're not going to have to live, um, you know, five families in one house uh, or one apartment. Uh, so I just wanted to point that out and really um, continue to encourage your leadership for thinking of this in a more open-minded reality. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you for all your hard work for the village. Okay, anybody else? Okay, we need to, I need to have a motion oh, to- Abby, did you have one more thing? Yeah, I'll just, if I could just respond to this. All right, so we're, look, we're not a debate though, but just give one more time. Yeah. <laughs> Of course, um, I, I do just want to make the point, like um, Nara was also saying, that we're not saying all everything should be rezoned. Um, we're talking about very specific streets where half the streets are already legally multifamily. And what I want to think of, I've heard this multiple times from owners of single families in those areas, is well, what you know. Well, that's going to take away the value of your home. Actually, it's the opposite. Um, what we found is we can't sell our single family home on those streets, right? Because it's all multifamily. So I just want to make the point very directly to everyone who's thinking about this, that the ship is kind of sailed for these streets that we're talking about. And all of those people who are worried about the values of their single family homes, um, that's kind of sailed too. And if, if that's really what you care about, then you should really be kind of more embracing the reality, the facts on the ground versus um, kind of wishing for something that's, you know, never going to go back. You know, the, the, the egg is cracked, the cookies crumbled, however you want to put it. So. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh I'd like to entertain a motion to refer this to the Harbor Coast Zone Management Commission. So moved. Second. Hold roll, please. Trustees Rawlings? Yes. Yaisa Reed? Yes. Young? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Now, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn this uh, hearing until the 26th of uh, June. I'll make that motion, but I, I want to. 
let people know that I don't think that's going to be the end of it. I think we'll probably keep it open after the 26th of June into July, uh, just to give people a chance to, uh, there's a lot there, right? It's uh, 200 pages and there's a lot for people to digest. So give people a chance to really get to know it. And uh, if they have any more questions or concerns, because it's a big step, it's something that happens, you know, maybe every 10 or 20 years. So uh, we want to make sure it's thorough. And, it, and, it's, and it's a guide. So if you have alternative wording you'd like to work into the plan, yeah. bring it on in. Yep. Okay, so I'll make the motion to adjourn this hearing until uh, June 26th. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Okay, now let's get to some of the agenda. Okay, <laughs> did you just vote? <laughs> no, 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 just the public hearing for the company. Oh, yeah. Is that what you were here for? Good to see you. Bye bye. Island, island lady. <laughs> Where is she? Okay. Okay, file out quietly, please. Uh, first item is 2A, is authorization to execute budget transfers for over budget expenses. Uh, the budget uh, items that it's, uh, budget lines that's coming from and going to are delineated in our, uh, in our resolution. Anybody have any questions or concerns? Need a motion? Uh, move to... So moved. Sorry. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Tonight we have uh, the beginning of the fiscal year. So we have two sets of abstracts. We have abstracts from the year uh, 2023 and from the budget year 2024, which we are just starting tonight. We just started in June. So the first abstract from the budget year. Uh, Ending 53123 is $1,636,829. And no, oh, right. You, you gave me my, my, my bed is $1,632,900. What number? Let me do this again. $1,632,929.16. Is uh, any questions or concerns? No. I'll make a motion to adopt. Oh, um, wait, 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 wait. No. Right. No. I'll make a motion to adopt. Second. Okay. All in favor. All right. Thank you. Uh, the next item is 2C, resolution of abstract order to vouchers for this fiscal year. That we just started on June 1st. And this is, oh, this is a hefty one. $3,623,333.89. Questions or concerns? Um, there's a lot of insurance here, right? Yes. There's workers' compensation uh, bill is $1 million. Uh, there's uh, hospital and medical insurance. It's another $1 million. This, so this is, you know, uh, large charges that don't recur every uh, ordering. million here, a million there. Well, you know you're talking real much. There you go. Uh, questions or concerns? No. Any motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Excellent. Okay, signed, sealed, and delivered. No, I'll give these to Jerry, please. Um, next up, old business, there's none. New business comments limited to three minutes. Resolution authorizing street closure for the June 28th, 2023 Fireman's Parade. So the Fireman's Parade, June 28th, please come down. Uh, and this is just a resolution uh, closing the street at that time. This is, I, I just know the last sentence. This is Wednesday, June 28th, 2023. <laughs> yeah. That's five years from now. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Can we get that change? Yeah, we might want to update this. Uh, June 28, 2023. Yeah. Good catch. Would like to make a motion, Manny? So I'll so. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, resolution authorizing garden at Harbor Island accepting 
holding it. We're, we're holding it. We need the documentation on yeah, it. Yeah, we're holding it. That was wishful thinking. Mm -hmm. uh, resolution adopting standard workday and retirement reporting resolution. Uh, this gives a sense of the hours that the elected officials are working. Not really. Grossly <laughs> underestimates. There's a formula. There's a formula. Yeah, I know. It's what they think we're it it yeah. says I'm working 14 hours every two weeks. Mm -hmm. it's a formula. I, have, I have days. That are 14 hour days. Yeah, you're 14 <laughs> hours by Tuesday morning. Uh, anyway, I'll make that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Resolution authorizing the serving of alcohol at the Coast Guard Auxiliary event at Harbor Island Park. Uh, this is July 4th. Uh, the Coast Guard has a little get together with the blessing of the fleet, and they have maybe a couple of bottles of wine. Uh, and just as so folks know, Anytime serving alcohol in Harbor Island Park, it requires the permission of the Board of Trustees. So I'll make the motion. Second. All in favor? Uh, okay. And the resolution authorizing the serving of alcohol at the Tiki Party, which is a party that is thrown by LMC, which they'll be more imbibing than at the Coast Guard Party, because uh, they, they, they're a fun-loving crowd. And it's always a fun party. Xavier, you have a good time at the party? Yeah, Xavier is uh, our LMCTV man. He, he films it and has a good time. Uh, I'll make that resolution. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, resolution scheduling a public hearing. Oh, pardon me. Resolution scheduling a public hearing on PLLP 2023 land use board procedures. Uh, what this is, is the... Uh, it has to do with the noticing of uh, public hearings or if you you're getting work done at your house. Uh, it, it was a hodgepodge of different uh, distances and we are bringing it down to 200 feet, but the signage has to still remain. You have to still have a sign on your property. Mr. Spolzino, would you like to eludicate? That's, that's correct. What, what this does is bring together in one place the notice requirements to neighbors and to the world. Uh, regarding applications for land use approval, land use board approvals. Right now, there's a separate notice section for each board, the planning board, the zoning board, each type of approval, the variance for site plan approval or subdivision approval. We, we're trying to coordinate and um, simplify the procedure without changing any of the substance and without changing, without, without cutting anybody out of the notice process. Uh, by having one place where this procedure is located. Uh, so that's what this, this law does. It consolidates four or five different notice procedures into one notice procedure. Beautiful. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Thank you. And this will schedule the public hearing for the, uh, the June 26th. Well, Mayor, you may want to think about sending this, uh, scheduling the public hearing far enough out that the land use boards can comment in advance of the public hearing. I thought they had come to home. And yeah, only one board. I think the zoning board took it up. I think Mr. Carter yeah. to the zoning board. Uh, we, we, have, uh, we have provided copies of the law to the land use boards already. Uh, the zoning board did meet before this meeting and provide their comments. Um, and uh, I don't believe we've received any comments from HCZM or planning board. Okay. Uh, okay. They, meet, they meet planning meets this week and HCZM meets the following week. So okay. Yes. They, they have time. Then, then the 26th is giving you that problem. Okay. So I need a motion. So moved. Second. Call the roll. Trustees Rawlings. Yes. Yes. Reed. Yes. Young. Yes. Lucas. Yes. Mayor Murphy. Aye. Uh, resolution authorizing dates and street closure uh, for the summer on the Avenue block party. And uh, looks like it's going to be a fun block party. And the date of the street closure is July 26th. And if it's a rain date, July 27th. I'll make that motion. Second. 
I'm sorry, no, you want to say no, I just hope it doesn't rain. Yeah, I hope it doesn't rain. Just... <laughs> it was bad. It just is so I do remember that 2019 date. I Jerry, I think a rain date's a very good idea. Downboard. All right, so we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 That was a crazy day. Resolution authorizing funding for Columbia Firehouse renovations. Jerry, you want to talk about this a little bit? Uh, Mayor, this is trying to save some additional damage that the weather um, is uh, causing havoc at the Columbia Firehouse. Uh, this is extensive window, lentil, and other uh, rehabilitation for approximately $760,000. And we've added to the resolution um, a 10% contingency on that. Um, we have old buildings and they need to be refurbished. Yep. We just finished 234 Stanley. We are working <clears throat> from issue to issue in this building and now Columbia has to be, um, has to be addressed. Sure. Any questions or concerns? Need a motion? So moved. Second. Pull the roll. Please Rawlings. Yes. Yeah, read. What are we on? H. Uh, Columbia 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 Columbia. H. Young? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, resolution awarding contract for 2023 01 to CDGB and drainage repair. This is the uh, the repairs over on uh, Ralph that we talked about before. Mm -hmm. Okay, anybody having questions or concerns? Okay, we, we, we're putting up 275,000, the, the county's putting up 275,000, and we're hoping to get the remainder from FEMA. Is that right, Jerry? We will get the remainder from FEMA. We will get the remainder from FEMA. I like the that. documentation. Uh, I like that. Yep. Uh, Other than we want it now. <laughs> that we can't do. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you can say it. <laughs> I, I need a motion. So move. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. All right, uh, resolution. It's interesting. When I say all in favor, you will say aye. And when you vote, you will say yes. I know, and you say aye. Yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> resolution <laughs> authorizing funding uh, of invoice to pay for subsurface soil and foundation investigations associated with the reconstruction of Halstead Avenue. We talked about this in the work session before. Halstead Avenue. Uh, is built upon old trolley tracks that were never removed. Uh, and it causes the roadway to sag. It causes it to get potholes. It causes it sometimes to get enormous potholes. Uh, we just gave it a, a surface paving so it'd be drivable, but it really needs, you know, it's, it's probably been since the forties, they took out the trolley and paved over it. And uh, it was the wrong thing to do back then. And uh, you know, a lot of times in this community, we kick the can down the road, and uh, it's sometimes left up to this board to be at the end of the road and to actually fix the thing the way it should have been fixed. You know, probably at the end of World War II. <coughs> um, so that being said, this is a study to pay for the uh, investigation of that, and I'll make the motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Resolution authorizing payment to AKRF for Ralph and Gertrude Avenue drainage improvements. We're holding this. We're holding this. Okay. Uh, next up is uh, for L resolution establishing affordable housing ad hoc task force. Now I, I, we talked about this in a work session before, and I, I'm not against the idea of having a task force, but I was thinking we should have a task force. You know, to, to, like they were talking about before is to maintain affordabilities and to help people with landlord and tenant problems. That's what I thought this was originally going to be. You know, I think if we're going to have a task force to do an affordability plan, we have to come up with, you know, at least the outline of the plan ourselves and about what we want to see and, you know, what we want to uh, have come out of that. So I think it's premature for that, but I, well, I think you know, we could just expand what we want for the scope of the committee. I, I, I think that that's a lot to ask for a committee that, you know, we, we, we're doing this on the fly. Well, I, mean, I actually don't think it's a lot. To, I mean, I think it's, a, I think 
I don't think it's a lot to ask of a committee. Um, and I say that because there are a lot of communities that have done it that way. And I think you need a group of people to work on it. Um, I think it's, you know, maybe it could be two, I mean, we could break into a subcommittee, but we can't work in pairs. We, we can work in pairs. We can't work in threes because it violates the open meetings law. So um, the odds of us actually drafting this report, I think are minimal if we are doing it ourselves. So that's why I think working, you know, having a group that's dedicated to it would be great. I'm happy to work on it with another trustee to work, flesh out the bones of it. But, um, you know, we, we really can't work as a group of three or four or five, unless we're in a public well, meeting. Unless I, we focus too. Uh, but I, I think what I'm talking about is using our professional staff to at least come up with, you know, the outline of a plan and then having, you know, talking about it as a board and then seeing if we need outside help. Well, I'm happy to work on an outline of it with Greg. I mean, I'm happy to do that. Poor Greg, can we keep volunteering him when he's not in the well, room? He left, yeah. yeah. So don't leave the room or you're gonna get a better good. job. Well, I don't know. Got it. What do you guys wanna do here? I, I think, I I think, we, need to, I think we need to develop an outline. Oh, I will work on an outline. We require the target. <laughs> I, I will work on an outline that's. Well, well, yeah, why don't we work on the resolution? I don't, because I mean, you just, you know, we, 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 we're forming a board without a mission. Yeah, I got, I got a feeling we're going, to, we're going to form a task force and ask them what they'd like to do. Yeah. So it, it, uh, it, I, think we, I think we need to probably. I, I, I just thought I would yeah, do go, that. Go, go, I go, will go, do go, that. Go, go, go. All right, so you want to hold this? Great idea, though. We'll hold it for two weeks and we'll, we'll do a couple of we, we, We're going to have to renoise because you're going to come up with a new thing. Eventually, we're going to have to have a discussion about it. So, yeah. and it's going to be us. Resolution uh, 4M, resolution authorizing no turn at Fenimore and Boston Floats Road. Uh, this was something that we talked about. Oh, thank you. This is something that we talked about uh, in work session. And it was uh, something that Ms. Short uh, talked about uh, before. Uh, yeah, because, you know, and, and I had a, a couple come to uh, my office hours uh, who live on Fenimore, uh, and, and they've lived there a long time, and they talked about this too. And then soon after, uh, that uh, young, young gentleman and his mom got hit by the car, and thankfully they're on the road to recovery, but, uh, you know, it's time to do something about this. Uh, so this resolution would be a no turn on red on Fenimore and Boston Post Road. That in itself will make that crossing safer, but what that allows us to do also, it allows us to go to the state and have the state uh, do more intervention on that crossing. So this is something we can do, and, and then we ask the state for more, uh, for more. Right, but the state predicates their action on us doing this. Got it. So I'd, I'd be happy to make that motion. Second. Second. Oh. All in favor. Oh, uh, nine. <laughs> kick out of the eyes. Uh, yes. Resolution recognizing Joe Liberti on the occasion of his being honored by the legal women voters. Uh, I wasn't here for this, but I, I'm, I'm all in favor of honoring Mr. Liberti. He does great work. Uh, so this is a resolution by the Board of Trustees uh, talking about the great service that Mr. Liberti has done both to the community uh, and to the school, you know, and just on the, on the ballot this year is going to be uh, an initiative that Mr. Liberti's class uh, presented to the Board of Trustees about uh, moving the elections to even numbered years. And I was told today that the New York State Legislature has passed a law that all town elections and all county elections will now happen on even numbered years. So if we stayed in the odd numbered years, we will be the only people on the ballot. Mm -hmm. So it, it kind of it gives a different perspective to uh, what Trustee Young brought to the board via the uh, young folks at Okra. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it, it's, it's the way the wind's blowing. That's it. They also, his, his, his uh, one of his cohort students did a lot of research for the community in regards to right to rights to counsel. That's right. And Westchester County approved that. So yes, the, 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 it really made a difference. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm not saying they were like the main factor for that, but it, the the topics 
I, 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 I spoke at his class uh, at seven o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And uh, it, it's, it's so hilarious to watch the young people get dropped off by their parents at seven o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Like some of these boys are like pretty much falling out of the car, <laughs> right? And then to have to speak to them and thinking, you know, my kids, my kids don't listen to me at seven o'clock in the morning. My kids don't listen to me at eight o'clock. And these poor kids are like, oh God, this guy's got a drone on. <laughs> I, so I tried to keep, I tried to keep it short. Sure, okay. uh, so anyway, um, uh, somebody's got to be, I think do we have to deliver this thing. Well, is it going to be in the form of like a proclamation? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, proclamation. So, so um, do we ask for that? It's on Thursday. We, yeah. Is would, this Thursday? Would you, would you like oh, to yes. go? Maybe. I'm going. You're going. Oh, then you, yeah, there you go. Okay, I can't. I can't go. So I'm so, going. Okay, Sally, could we get the proclamation to Lilani? Dan, can we get the proclamation <laughs> to Lilani? Yes. Yeah, we'll get it to her. Okay. Of course. Would Thursday? Yes. That's an eternity for yes. us. <laughs> <laughs> Might need to edit out uh, one or two more ask clauses to make it fit. But am I the only one going? Okay. Don't know where you're going. I don't know if I'm going. I have something else, so oh, I don't know. Right. I have another meeting that night. It's, uh, it's like six, a, it's six a, o'clock. Six o'clock, and it's over at Anderson's Anderson bookstore. Anderson bookstore. That's right. All right. Not that I don't mind. But. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Liberty. Uh, last chance to address the board. Very time. No, he said time. Jerry he said time. Jerry time. Robert Stark, 704 Comment Court. Um, at the work session, somebody brought up the Evelyn Wood. Just for the sake of uh, curiosity, I took the Evelyn Wood course in systems. <laughs> uh, I would say, in theory, it's a great theory. Practice, don't waste your money. Um, the uh, When Mr. Desai spoke about affordable housing, I thought he used the term and recommended an affordable housing committee. So maybe the, the problem is committee versus task force. He recommended it, maybe it's up for you to consider. He thought it was a good idea for the problem. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is um, I'm going to talk about the traffic commission. This, these are my opinions. I'm, I'm happy that you're going to address the traffic issues that were on your agenda. I just, I was upset that more time was spent on something that I didn't think was relatively important, specifically um, Medicare for all. I thought it was more important to talk about and deal with your traffic issues. I thought that dealt with real needs of the people as a member of the traffic commission who was at our meetings, Lady Lani's at our meetings. You know that people who come to our meetings have genuine safety issues, whether it's pedestrians or traffic. And when they come to our committee and we make recommendations, hopefully that they're addressed sooner rather than later. Just constructive criticism. Just like, I'd just like to point out that everything that was on is now going to be voted on at the next works at the next regular meeting. So we did address but, it. But so it, it should have been, it should mm -hmm. sorry. Mm -hmm. it should have been addressed at the last meeting. The the idea that you didn't have time. I don't go for that. It, yeah, it didn't vote either. Either. That works okay. well, Thank you. Thank, um, I'm going to say this. It was an oversight if I didn't advocate on the behalf of the traffic committee for this particular week, then that would be an oversight on me and I'll take that ownership. Um, but these things do happen and I apologize if I did make that oversight on the behalf of the traffic committee as your liaison. All right, okay. Uh, and, and they're all gonna get addressed. There were no, there were no qualms. Uh, report from the village manager, we did extensively. Report from the clerk treasurer. Hi, Augie. There he is. Good evening, Mayor. Yes, uh, the first item is renewal of GP and GPC permits. They expire June 1st. We're giving a grace period until June 14th. The second item is the second, the first half village property tax payments are due. That is all, Mayor. Thank you, Augie. 
I report from village attorney. Mayor Local Law 7 of 2023, which was the local law regarding the dog park and effectuating establishing the authority of the village manager to establish rules for the dog park. Right. It was filed with the Secretary of State and became effective on May 15, 2023. Thank you. And I just want to thank the park staff and the rec staff for the amazing sign that they erected That's cool. at the ball park. They yeah. really did an excellent job. It's, it's amazing what these folks can do when you give them a chance to uh, use their own initiative. Uh, minutes, boards, committees, uh, minutes of the Board of Trustees work session, regular meeting of May 22nd, and special meeting of May 31st, 2023. Minutes of Harbor Coast Zone Management Commission meeting of March 13th. April 3rd, April 11th, and April 19th, 2023. Minutes of the Planning Board meeting of May 10th, 2023. Minutes of the Board of Architecture Review of uh, April 20th, 2023. And minutes of the Arts Council of May 10th, 2023. Uh, I gratefully entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Uh, uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>